for a city that prides itself to be a leader in the eradication of homelessness acts completely opposite when they are called to task. On April 24, 2017, during the first and second readings, they reprimanded humanistic landlord Keith Young for allowing four socially disadvantaged people to move into his rooming house. While the addition of four people was still well within the allocated floor space per person and the building itself exceeded both building and fire codes, they rejected his application to convert his duplex into a triplex, thus preventing him to be in compliance to the city's bylaws. Instead, the counselors became tunnel vision and focused at the time that he permitted those four destitutes to move into his rooming house was in contravention of the city's bylaws. Completely ignoring the human element that these people needed the assistance now, not six months or a year down the road, and bureaucracies tend to take time. As a consequence of the city's denial, these four people have to be evicted from a well-kept rooming house located in an area of town where all the services that they need are within walking distance. Here is what Mr. Young's tenants had to say. Stay where I'm at because it's my home. I gotta have that place. My sister won't take me in one way, so I, I, I stay with Keith Young for my life. That's where I want it. I don't want to stay there. It's a good place to live. And I'm a working man. I keep going. Okay. I'm doing good. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Gallant? Gallant. Uh, Mike Gallant. Mr. Gallant. Yeah, there he is. Hi. How are you? Good. I've been with Keep on um, five years. I wait to pay. I don't want to move. Don't want to move. Okay. I wait to pay. I get around everybody good. People. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. Lisa Sparks. Yes, I lived to, moved in to 46 Charlotte Street five years ago, and I love it there. It's my home. Keith is really good with everybody and reliable. We're all like one happy family living there, and I don't want to lose my home. I love it there, and Keith's a good landlord. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bud, Bud Boone. Oh, no. Uh, uh, I'd love to stay where I'm at right now. Uh, I have no other accommodation and uh, no place to go at the moment. I, I would not like to be kicked out of my home. Uh, Keith was very good to me, and since my brother and family went, my brother passed away. Uh, a few years back, I was there four years, and I, uh, excuse me, I'm kind of nervous. It's okay. Um, Take your time. Uh, Keith's been very good to me as to support me and my well-being in the place, and uh, I really appreciate it. Do odd little things, like do a little cleaning, a little uh, this and a little that, but our home is good and clean now, and, uh, you know, and things are good, and everybody gets along, and that's the way she should be, so I just thought I'd come here before. Peace happen. Okay. Give me a little. Thank you very much. Okay, that's all I got to say. Okay, appreciate that. Yep. These four people are now either going to be thrown out into the elements of nature or forced to relocate into another area of town where they may not have easy access to the services they once enjoyed. Eric Price, counselor for Ward 4 a self-proclaimed fighter for the eradication of homelessness chastised Mr. Young for giving sanctuary to the desperate in need. Price would not accept Mr. Young's humanitarian reasons for saving four people from the hells of homelessness. 
While Price argued that he was going to vote against the application because Mr. Young did not follow the rules, Price totally rejected that the application itself was an attempt to come into compliance to those rules. Question uh, about the, the, the report that we received. Uh, you owned the building in 1996, did you? Uh, yes, well, 20 plus years. Uh, <laughs> it says in our report in 1996, two building permits were issued for renovations to increase the living space and the structure on the third level for additional bedrooms and a washroom, as well as other renovations. The building permits specifically include conditions limiting the building, the, the entire building, to a maximum of two dwelling units with a maximum of four bedrooms per unit. Um, <clears throat> so what happened after that? Okay. Uh, when uh, uh, I approached years ago when I purchased the building, I uh, looked up into the uh, uh, peak of the roof and I, I realized that it had a high-pitched roof which I could convert into uh, extra rooms and so I went to uh, the uh, city and applied for a building permit to put extra rooms on that top third level, four extra rooms and a washroom and uh, so when it was completed I was uh, notified that uh, I uh, really couldn't put extra rooms there and it sort of uh, uh, bothered me why did I go to that expense to put the rooms in that building and knowingly they knew that that was the purpose of it and uh, all of a sudden they say that I can't put rooms there I can put those rooms into storage and uh, with my parents on the lower level that allowed me to have uh, four and on the top level and uh, four on the uh, middle level, which they finally said okay. And with my parents on the lower level, uh, the thing is when they passed away, that gave me that third level and I guess it was an oversight on my part. Uh, I, uh, through people calling agencies to put people into those uh, more rooms, more affordable living, I uh, just opened that particular lower level into rooms to house them. In 96 when you got the permit and one of the conditions on the permit were uh, a maximum of four bedrooms per unit for a total of eight, uh, you, you decided to rent two more, um, but you did know about the, the uh, instructions that you could only have eight. So you were aware that you could only have eight uh, as per your permit. I was aware and I, I guess an oversight on my part, I just uh, automatically put more people in who came off the street. It puts us as council in a really precarious situation, I must tell you. Um, I'm the chair of the Affordable Housing Committee and I want housing for people, but uh, there has to be rules and regulations, you know, so this is a real, uh, this is real tough, especially with your tenants coming here and knowing that they're going to be booted out. Um, but it, it looks, it, it, seem, it would appear that, you know, that we follow the rules. Uh, so this is, this is a tough one for me, but, but... We respect my authority! That is interesting. Price goes on at nausea about the strict adherence to the rules when the previous council had to publicly apologize to the public for hosting an illegal meeting in behind closed door behind the public's eyes. They had to apologize. We didn't follow our rules. We're sorry. Our bad. Interesting. Just simply interesting. In an appropriate way. If we've been given the chance, but we just kind of pushed right on through that point. My concern, however, after we amended the letter, after we voted on it, um, and the debate wasn't long and we didn't have a lot of time to think about it. Um, but my great concern was that it did not come back after CIC to a regular council meeting or a special council meeting as it says in our federal bylaw that all matters must. And that is the point in time where it would have been made clear that the public could come in and have their say on the issue and watch us debate the issue. So I just want to be very clear that uh, 
you know, procedural irregularities happen, in my opinion, and that uh, the uh, letter should be ruled out of order and rescinded. Um, but it should be ruled out of order and rescinded because it was, uh, it failed to be ratified through council consideration at a regular council meeting after it was discussed, I think appropriately, in a closed CIC session. And I'd be happy to make a motion to that effect. Very good. A uh, motion on the floor that it be rescinded. Is that what your motion is? Seconded by, seconded by Councilor McDermott that the letter that was sent to the Prime Minister through the Canadian Chamber of Commerce, that that letter and the content be rescinded. That's the motion. On the question? To go around and uh, that would have been a good point, Randy, had you been a little, uh, you know, more perceptive on that and called us on it. That's really what should have happened and saved this, well, this whole incident. But nevertheless. I did vote against it and I did say it was wrong at the time. When you pushed it forward, you also last Monday refused to allow it to go on the agenda last Monday night. We needed unanimous consent of council. The name just so go hide behind the public uh, uh, process now. If you did the wrong thing then, you need to fix this and move Calm on. down. There's nobody in the hall or you have a microphone. It's a council chamber. You're a councillor. Yeah. You're the mayor. You're the one that provides Listen, leadership. Randy, leadership. Randy, we, we can all take responsibility. We've learned our lesson. I think everybody's apologized. We've made ourselves look foolish. So it's okay for the decision makers to make apologies and accept no negative consequences for their screw-ups, yet to refuse to accept an apology from an altruistic landlord who tried to make a positive difference in people's life, that is just insane. I'll tell you where I'm at because it's my home. I got to have that place. My sister won't take me in one way, so I, I'm to, I stay with Keith Young. That's my life. That's where I want it. That I want to stay there. It's a good place to live. And I'm a working man. I keep going. Okay. I'm doing good. I'm going to pay you. I wait to pay. I don't want to move. Don't worry about that. I wait to pay. I get around everybody good. People. Mm hmm. Okay. Charlotte Street five years ago. And. I love it there, it's my home. Keith is really good with everybody and reliable. We're all like one happy family living there. And I don't want to lose my home. I love it there and Keith's a good landlord. Thank you. Uh, I'd love to stay where I'm at right now. Uh, I have no other accommodation and uh, no place to go at the moment. I, I would not like to be kicked out of my home. Uh, Keith was very good to me and since my brother and family went, my brother passed away uh, a few years back. I was there four years, and I, uh, excuse me, I'm kind of nervous. It's okay. Um, Take your time. Uh, Keith's been very good to me as has supported me in my well-being in the place, and uh, I really appreciate it. Do odd little things, like do a little cleaning, a little this and a little that, but our home is good and clean now, and, uh, you know, and things are good, and everybody gets along, and that's the way she should be, so. I just thought I'd come here before he's half. Okay. Give me a little. Thank you very much. Okay, that's all I got to say. Okay, appreciate that. Yep.